Yo, what is going on, guys? My name is Big Pum, coach of your Rochester Ride-Ons, and I'm back, baby. We're back for our, uh, I think this is week 12 or week 11. I think it's week 11. For our week 11 match versus The Exception. Now, last week you did see my uh, AC, Lindomar, uh, take on Swami. Lindo did unfortunately lose that game, so that's unfortunate. But um, thankfully, they didn't knock us out of the playoffs. We're going to be good to go. Um, we're still in the race. Uh, actually, winning this match will actually clinch our playoff spot. So we really need to come through here with a win. Um, some stuff is kind of going down in the MPA. Uh, I won't personally announce it. I think the MPA channel itself will announce that. So uh, kind of be on the lookout on the actual MPA channel. I'll link it down in the description. But keep an eye on that because some things are getting shaken up a little bit. But uh, anyway, let's get on to the match here. Let's talk about things. So this week I have a Stelium Z Tornadus. Now I practiced Stelium Z just so I could guarantee that I didn't miss the Iron Tail versus uh, Deancey during team prep. We didn't really see another Z move we had to run, so we just ran. Uh, we ran that, and then we also got Akirum. I think we're running Expert Bell Kirum with four attacks, HP Fire, Ice Beam, Earth Power, and I forget what the last move was. But oh, and Fusion Bolt for the Araquated. So that's all Kirum's pack in pretty standard. And we got a mat <coughs> excuse me, a modest Blastoise with like max HP, max special attack. This thing is just supposed to take a hit and kill something back. That's basically all Blastoise's job is this week. Um he's also back in the rapid spin in case he wants to bring some hazards. Um, all that good stuff. And then we got Florges. Florges is gonna be our bulky wall. Gonna be kind of our answer to Porygon Z there because I can take a hit from Porygon as long as he's not like hyper beam or anything too crazy. So hopefully Florges can deal with that. Um, other than that, I can pretty much just revenge kill, uh, the Porygon anyway, so if anything, it just goes down to the Porygon and we'll get over it. Not too influential, influential this match. And then who else we got? We got Sheznot. Now, Sheznot. Actually, I'm gonna go over Sheznot last, because that's our best set. Then we got a Rhyperior. Our Rhyperior is Rocky Helmet, uh, Stealth Rock, like, max defense, max HP. That's basically our Darmanitan check. Uh, I'm gonna, basically, anytime Darmanitan comes in, I'm switching into Rhyperior. I can eat up. Any hit he wants to go for it, and I can punish with the Rocky Helmet, so I can punish U-Turn. If he wants to just keep spamming U-Turn, I'm going to get some damage off, so that's the idea with uh, Rhyperior. And now our Sheznot set. Sheznot is a very cool set this week. We're rocking Salic Berry, Substitute, Belly Drum, Drain Punch, and Seed Bomb. Basically, what happens, if I set up a Substitute, and he lets me keep... Basically, I'm going to try to set up the Substitute on uh, Ferrothorn, because Ferrothorn, no matter what, cannot... Well, basically... Any move that Ferrothorn typically runs, like Gyro Ball or uh, Power Whip, is not going to touch Shesna. It's not going to do enough to break my sub. So you're gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to uh, switch in on the Ferrothorn, set up a sub, set up a Belly Drum, and go from there. Now, if I set up the sub and the Belly Drum, then my Salic Berry will go off, and I'll outspeed his entire team, uh, barring any Scarfers. So I will outspeed all of his team, and with the Belly Drum, I will Oko his entire team. There's nothing that can live a hit for me, especially since he didn't bring the Latios. Latios would have been a roll with a Seed Bomb to kill in one hit, but thankfully he didn't bring it. So if I can get that Shesnite off, boy, that's a sweep. And we're going to see how that goes. But anyway, guys, let me go ahead and get into the match. Enough of the team prep stuff. And here we go, guys. Now, like I said, this is an uh, exception. Uh, his link, the Tampa Bay Luxrays, anyway. Uh, his link and stuff will be down in the description below. Awesome, dude. It was definitely a pleasure to have this match. It was very easily scheduled and all that good stuff so it was a very clean match but anyway i'm gonna start off with the tornadoes here um i figured he might uh assume i'm scarfed or something anyway i can just go here i know i'm faster than this thing except for if he's scarfed and i'm assuming he's not scarfed because i don't think that's normally a set but anyway i'll be able to figure it out here but he did get the special attack boost which is scary so i'm gonna have to u-turn right out into florges no doubt about it because florges is the only thing that can even come close to taking a hit from this thing um so yeah, as you can see i am gonna switch out of my florges here and boom we see a turn one z move and that is very very scary <laughs> porygon z is an absolute monster with the plus one special attack boost i'm pretty much guaranteed to die here um but you're gonna see he's gonna go for the breakneck blitz i'm assuming this is like z hyper beam or z tri attack either way but you're gonna see something pretty interesting here anyway look at that z move animation that is beautiful boom and i live that and that's very weird so and he reveals it. He's a physical Porygon. <laughs> He's a physical Porygon with Z double edge. That crit, I don't know if mattered. It's close, but anyway, I was just going to toss. I think I had like Wish Protect. Um, the crit kind of mattered, but not like super heavily, I don't think. I don't think I could live there. It would have been really close. But anyway, so he was a physical Porygon Z. But anyway, I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to toss off an Ice Beam. This is a roll, but it's super heavily in my favor. It was like a 90% chance to kill. 
and I just needed to kill this thing. So Kirim is going to come in, pick up the revenge kill, get the ice beam. So it's back down to a 5-5. So thankfully Kirim comes in here. Now, this is scary. I know this thing, the way he brought it in, I know it's Scarf. And Scarf Yarm is extremely common and works very well against my team. I'm switching right out into Rhyperior, just like I said. Rhyperior is only job is to come in whenever Darmanitan comes in. I don't care if it's predictable, that's his job. So, as you can see, I eat up that U-turn really easily, and I deal a lot of damage back with the Rocky Helmet, and that is the goal. So, he does pick up a bit of momentum here, which is uh, beneficial for him, no doubt. But, uh, there we go. So, he goes out into Barathorn, which isn't really a great switch in on his part, because I was packing Fire Punch, but this is the chance, guys. This is the chance we're waiting for. We're going into Sheznox. I know he's not clicking T-Wave on my right period. If anything, he's clicking the Power Whip, which he does. Not going to do that much damage to me, as you can see. I can eat that up pretty well. I'm not defensive at all. Anyway, that does a little bit of damage. But here we go, boys. It's time. I'm setting up the sub. I was kind of hoping he would click T-Wave here, but he doesn't do it. He goes out into Hitmon on top, which is a great play on his part. Gets the Intimidate off. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to save him. So I'm going to get up my sub here. Boom. Your boy is behind the sub. That's all we needed. Now, he's going to have to just break my sub here, and I'm going to go for the belly drum. So you did see I did outspeed here, so that's also important to note. I do outspeed before this Alec Berry, and I get my belly drum off. Boom! We're at 15 health. <laughs> We're at 15 health, and we managed to hold on. Okay, so that's, that 15 health is going to be important here. So and then he goes for the close combat. Obviously, he has to break my sub. Now, I know from this range, I can live a Sucker Punch. I'm pretty sure I could live a Sucker Punch because I do resist it. And I don't think, I think he said this wasn't an offensive, uh, yeah, I asked him what his set was after the match and he's only had like four attack EVs. So I could have loved a Sucker Punch, but he goes for the Bullet Punch here. And your boy dies. What a letdown. He actually needed the max roll there. Uh, it could have done like 14 to 16 as far as the high max roll goes and he got the 16. So, unfortunately, Shesnok goes down there without doing much. I had the Drain Punch, so I would have gotten the Drain Punch off here. Got some good damage. Killed the Hitmon top. But I don't think it matters too much because if I had killed the Hitmon top, he'd just go into Darmanitan and outspeed me and hit me with a Flare Blitz anyway. So, not too big of a deal. But, unfortunate that my set didn't get to show off there. But it's still pretty cool. We almost got it. Oh, and I'm an idiot. I wouldn't have lived the Sucker Punch because I died to a non-stab Bullet Punch. But, it, anyway, not the point. So uh, I am just going to toss off a Scald here, no reason not to, and then here I am going to toss off the Aura Sphere. It is a roll, whether I can kill in one hit. Remember, I'm modest, max special attack. It is the roll. I get kind of on the lower end, so I don't kill, which is unfortunate, but he's just going to toss off a Power Whip, and it's going to do less than half to me, because like I said, I am a very bulky Blastoise. He isn't going to kill me here, but I'm just going to go for the Aura Sphere, no reason to play around. Just knock this thing out here. Boom. Goodbye. Down goes the Ferrothorn to Blastoise, so Blastoise is picking up a kill this week, which is super dope. And then in comes him, like Darmanitan again. And like I said, I'm not playing games with here. I'm literally, like, I so during the match, I was like, okay, I can live a hit, but it's not worth it. I, I'm going to save that hit for later, but uh, I am just going to go right out into uh, Rhyperior here to get some uh, chip damage off of the Rocky Helmet. Like, literally, I said, I don't care if it's predictable. This is the play. This is the safe play to make. I have safe switch-ins to his team, and there's no reason to play around it. So anyway, he's going to go out here into... Hit on top, which is a little scary for me right now. This is not ideal, obviously. But uh, I can live a hit from this. So he is going to go for the Rock Slide, probably over-predicting, expecting the Tornadus to come in. Um, I didn't really have a safe switch in because I didn't really feel like going into Tornadus here. I'm really glad I made that play. But uh, I am like, I'm just going to get my Stealth Rocks up here. If I go down, then so be it. He has to spin them away later. But uh, yeah, so now we're at this point. He either has to decide to spin or hit me. And... Here he decides to go for the close combat. As you can see, because I am max defense, max HP, bold, I can eat that hit. I ate up that close combat. Now he's minus one. I'm also minus one attack, so that's why. Uh, anyway, but you're going to see he does pick up a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage. I am minus one. And here we go. Boom! Look at that Earthquake damage. Almost kills. And then uh, he doesn't just have the leftovers. He has revealed the leftovers. So unfortunately, I don't pick up a kill here. Now he has to decide whether he wants to spin or if he wants to kill me. And he is going to go... Oh, he does go for the spin. Never mind, I'm a liar. But he does just go for the spin here. There's no damage to me, but I am going to get to pick up a kill here with Rhyperior. Which is awesome. Very good. Good work from Rhyperior this week. Uh, unfortunately, he is really weak. So he's not really going to take a Darmanitan hit anymore. But I do have the rocks up. Well, no, he just rapid spun them away. So I don't have rocks up anymore. But uh, yeah. So very good plays on his part. So in comes the Darm. And I decide I am not switching out. I'm just going to let, uh, I'm just going to go down here. And he goes for the U-turn, over predicts me to switch. 
Um, or he probably thought it would kill. But anyway, as you can see, max defense, max HP, Rhyperior. Living hits that he probably otherwise shouldn't. So awesome job from Rhyperior. So and anyway, now he's uh, he's kind of stuck here. And I just got up my rocks again because with his Rapid Spinner dead, his, my rocks are going to get to stay up all game. And it's going to be really clutch for the Darmanitan. And it's going to be good for the Spider if I could have got it before the Spider came back in. But anyway, I sped crept this uh, Araquanid to make sure I outsped. And the Stone Edge somehow didn't kill. <laughs> it was a roll. It was a roll. Because I think he said he was like max defensive or something. But unfortunately, we don't kill with Stone Edge. But uh, anyway, we are going to get the kill with the Rocky Helmet. So unfortunately, I had to go down that way. But anyway, so Araquanid kills me with Liquidation. But I kill back with the Rocky Helmet. So that's another kill for Rhyperior, which is super cool. But I'm just going to go out into the Blastoise here. It's my safest switch in. I know I can live a hit from... Um, I can live a hit from the Darm. I can hit anything else. So I'm like, this is fine. So as you can see, Darm is going to take that Rock's damage. That's super bad for him. Now, either I can live any move he goes for. Like, he's going to go toss off this Flare Blitz. And I'm pretty sure I can live this relatively safely. As you can see, I do live on 9 HP. So I do live quite safely. And now this thing is going to go down. Uh, even if he had U-turned there, I obviously would have lived. And he would have died coming back into Rock's, I think. So anyway, Blastoise picking up another kill with Scald. So Blastoise putting in the finest of work this week. And he's going to go out into Diancy. And now this is super scary. Now, when we were prepping for Diancy, there was kind of two sets we thought he would bring. He could bring Trick Room Offensive or he could bring, uh, what do you call it? Screens. And Screens was also scary. But um, yeah, as you can see, the Skull is going to put in a lot of damage there. And we do manage to snag the burn. And that's actually pretty big. And you're going to see why. He sets up the Trick Room. This man is a genius brilliant set by him and really well played but thankfully i stag a burn here and i'll we're gonna have to talk about that after the bad show is over but i'll continue to talk about the game as it's going out but uh he's gonna go for the diamond storm here that's definitely gonna pick up the kill on blastoise since i only have nine hp left yep as you can see he does take up the kill and i think that raises his defense yeah it raises his defense and anyway so uh he is got the burn and he is gonna go down to the burn here now <laughs> so Blastoise gets the Skull Burn kill here as well. And we pick up a solid, I think it was a 2-0 win. Yeah, I think it was a 2-0 victory for uh, against the exception. And that basically, no, not basically. It does clinch our spot in the playoffs. And now let's get hyped for that, first of all. Like, that's amazing. And then also GG to the exception. That was a really well-played match. And that Diancy turn is quite interesting. So if I didn't stack that Skull Burn and... That probably could have lost me the game because he had Diamond Storm and he had, I'm sure he had Moon Blast as well. But Diamond Storm could have hit Tornadus and cure him for, like, I was at full HP with both of those. But after the match, I asked him, I was like, what was your set on Diancy? And based on his EVs, he wasn't going to be able to Oko cure him and he wasn't going to be able to Oko Tornadus. So thankfully, um, we were going to be safe either way. But uh, I just want to put that out there. So the Skull Burn definitely helps. It like ensures that no crits or anything happen. But he did not have the EVs to uh, kill me in one shot. And I think if he was... Uh, what was it? If he was the more offensive variant, I think Skull would have killed him anyway. But I'm not entirely sure about that. But anyway, guys, we do pick up a, a nice solid 2-0 win after a couple rough weeks. I think we've lost like two weeks in a row now. So it's definitely rough. But we do uh, bounce back here. Now we have two matches left. We have Crestle Key and then Divisional Opponent john pokemon so uh but yeah so basically the way the playoff is looks the way the playoff race looks it looks like it's going to be a cobain in the first seed spot and john in the second and then me in the third spot so anyway guys like i said there's a couple things going on down in the mpa and i'm sure they're going to make a video announcing it and kind of explaining what's going on so definitely look on that channel look look on the main mpa channel for information regarding that because i don't really feel like talking about that because that's not exactly my domain i don't have all the facts but uh I do know that the Rochester Rhydons are going to the playoffs, baby. So let's get hyped for that, man. Thank you guys so much for supporting this season. It has been a great season, no doubt. And I'm very excited that our uh, a season with a lot of tough competitors, we were able to clinch a playoff spot in a very, very competitive division. So anyway, guys, that's going to be the match this week. I'm going to get the hell out of here, and I'll catch you guys next week for our match with Crystal Key and the Adelaide Umbreons. Until then, guys, have a great day, and peace, baby.